This is great because we have Baylor uh, with us today. Now, Baylor has lived a dream of mine. Not only does she have a uh, new Christian song on the radio, something I've always wanted to do. Well, you can. I'm not really as good <laughs> at you at this. Um, uh, but she stood next to Jeff Probst on Survivor and heard these words. Baylor, Travis has spoken. Snuff. Snuff. That's so dramatic, but so, so cool. dramatic. So you were on Survivor, and you did like stupid well. Thank honestly. you. I appreciate that. Some people don't think fifth place is stupid well. <laughs> I think it's great. Well, thanks. Like, I think it is too. You outlasted a bunch of the other people. A bunch of the other people. And it was a tough season because your mom, uh, Missy, was on it with you as yeah. well. Yeah, my mom and I were on it together. It was season twenty-nine, Blood versus Water. If you've seen it, if you haven't, go check it out. Um, but yeah, she got third place. She beat me, and I got fifth. So yeah. we, we made it all the way. We were actually the last standing, like duo. That's see, that's amazing. I, I mean, see, that's because that's a pretty vicious game. I'm kind of I'm a little bit of a survivor nerd. I'm no Cochran, but even <laughs> saying that makes me a survivor nerd. I guess. No, that does. <laughs> yeah. If anyone knows who Cochran is, then they're a nerd. Exactly. That's okay. See, and so you guys did the show. Now, was this more of your mom's dream or your dream, like to to sign up for it? It was neither of our dreams. However, it was a perfect timing thing. What up? Uh, I just saw someone in the window, for those oh, of you who are... scary. <laughs> See, I... They too, sneak too up ADD. on you. <laughs> really? Me <Yeah>. too. <laughs> Squirrel. Squirrel, I know. Um, but yeah, my mom got a Facebook message from an old cheerleading coach of mine, and it was her... It was an employee of hers. Uh, and he reached out and was like, hey, what are you and Baylor doing? Um, we need a mother-daughter duo for this next season of Survivor. And my mom called me up, and I had just actually gotten back from doing another TV show that I was kind of like bitter about. I was just kind of like, and eh, no, no more TV. Really? And then, what yeah. was I'm dying to know about that. Well, it was The Voice. Oh, <laughs> and that's kind of right in your wheelhouse, it too, was, of wanting yeah. to be an art, because you went to Belmont. I went to it, Belmont for music and all this right. stuff, and it was so interesting how that door closed, like slammed shut, and then I get home to Nashville, and this wide open door to be on Survivor of all shows. Totally different <laughs> Totally thing. different thing. But for whatever reason, my mom was like, I feel like we should do this. I really think, you know, like it's it's an open door in our lap. Like, here's the opportunity. And so I said, okay. Okay, so I knew about your Survivor. I did not know about The Voice. Are there any other uh, singing competitions you've tried out for? I've done American did Idol you as well. Had a girl. <laughs> hey. I used to call it my TV show year because yeah. it was like, a voice happened, the voice, and then I came back after a four week thing there in LA, came back, did Survivor. Yeah. In the same year because I wow. didn't I didn't have T V time on the voice, which is which was good for me because contractually I was able to do another show. Mm. Then a few years passed and I did Idol. So well, you know what? You you're you're hustling. I respect I mean, that. No, but it was fun. I think when you when you for anyone listening, like if you fall into the T V thing, it's kind of it's common to be on multiple reality shows. So yeah. I think the next people. one I want to be on is Amazing Race. Really? Yeah. Oh, see, that's a good one. My daughter and I have yeah. dreamed about doing that right? together. And I've won. I've, you should do it. I know, but I've, I have this big fear. I have this big Why? fear. Okay, so obviously I'm a You're believer. You're not going to starve. You're a believer. No, not, oh, not okay, that at all. Okay. But I have this fear that my competition like my competitive side will get the oh. best of me and I won't be the best representation. Well, you probably won't. Yeah. So she, I'm, pr I'm really okay. proud of you. I'm proud of you for even having that thought because when I yeah. talk about Survivor, I always preface it that it was pre-Jesus Baylor. Sure. So even though I was always searching for him, I still wasn't following him fully on that show. So if you're going to watch it, right. just be warned. <laughs> yeah. There could be moments of not so sanctified Baylor. <laughs> <laughs> well, but that's an interesting thing though with the with the game, whether you're a believer or not, there are still morals and ethics and things yeah. like that. And so you get into this game where everybody it feels like they all just go, okay, for 39 days we're going to be horrible people and then <laughs> on the 40th day we're going to be amazing. Right. Like is that kind of thing everyone just as yeah. assumes we're going to lie to each other and it's cool? Pretty much. Yeah. I mean, I remember getting there and I was 20 years old at the time and I had, I did have morals and ethics. And even though I wasn't following Christ fully, like I still wanted to be a good person, Right. but I get out there and I remember like not being able to justify lying and cheating and right. deceitfulness for the first, at least 10 to 15 days, which is probably why I kept getting my name written down. <laughs> yeah. Your name was written down like 17 times. It was, which yeah. I take as a compliment now. Absolutely. Thank you very much. I was a, a threat. threat. Exactly. Uh -huh. Um, but after starvation and the sun starts wearing you down and you realize you're not going anywhere and you're out there, um, you know, I just started to like play the game. Yeah, I really did. And I don't necessarily know if I am happy about that now, but I did well, you sure. know, so it, it did, 
it was really hard. Like me and my husband watched the Hunger Games last night, and I was thinking about Survivor as I was watching it because I was like, she had to do what she had to do to survive. Right. But her heart was always like not to kill anyone. Right. That was kind of what I was feeling out there on Survivor. Not to kill anyone. Not to Good. kill anyone. Glad to hear that. Uh- <laughs> but emotionally, and like right. you know, and and. And like personally too, you know what I mean? Okay, so relationally. Flash forward, then let's right. say you get the opportunity because they always do like all stars and things like that. Have they ever talked to you about an all stars one? They haven't. They okay. didn't call me back. Oh, <laughs> but let's say they do. Let's H- say they do. How do you play it now as see, as sanctified? See, Baylor? like you just said about Amazing Race, I don't think I could do it again. Yeah. I don't think I could justify now that I know Christ the way I do. Right. Going out there and playing that game, unless. Jeff Probst let me bring my Bible and preach the gospel to everyone. Oh, well, there you go. But that... there, was, there was a guy that did that, and he got voted off to exile like every other day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which was kind of awesome for him. You didn't have to deal with much except for solitude. It, yeah. It, it's tricky when you put a target on your back in that game, and it yeah. can be for anything. It anything. could be being an outspoken Christian. Totally. It could be for lifestyle. It could be it that could be you're wealthy. Ath- athleticism. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Totally. The, the, the paranoia that must happen. I'm too paranoid. Like, I'm paranoid here. I yeah. feel at work I'm playing Survivor. <laughs> like, Gavin, I, he, look how close his eyes are together. Beady. I don't trust him. <laughs> don't trust him as far as I can throw him. Right. And so I'm always, right. uh, I'm always looking then you get out there and like i'm telling you your brain starts to like wonder and you're it's so difficult because it's like playing a chess game with people but you're on their team but you're against them the whole time so talk about paranoid and and you know your brain's starting to go cray cray oh for sure now there is like a culture it's kind of like you you, you talk about like the bachelor and they have bachelor nation and yes. stuff like that. you're married so you won't do that show now <laughs> nope <Okay>. done <laughs> uh and so uh but like but tv shows there seems to be this weird camaraderie and they have their own culture is that true with survivor oh, has that been your experience 100 percent. okay i have survivor accounts follow me on instagram almost daily survivor really? number one fan survivor nation like you just said yeah um yeah survivor girl one two three four five nice you know or whoever it is um i think people just like anything sports teams or whatever like you hop on a bandwagon and you kind of just ride it you know but now are you friends with people from your season and other survivors oh you know? i see what you're yeah, saying yeah, yeah. so um i didn't really hop on that bandwagon because right. i do think players can kind of get into this like Survivor family, and we're right, all exactly. we're all gonna like hang out every year, and we're the family that lie to yeah. each other all the time. Come on, <laughs> well, talk about dysfunction. Yeah, uh, even though we all like each other, but we don't because right. you voted me out, and so I didn't. I didn't go into that world. My mom did a little bit more than I did. Okay. Um, so we still have a lot of friends on our season, but we don't like keep up with them like every Thanksgiving, if that okay. makes sense. So yeah, we'll, that makes sense. we'll hang out with them if they're in town. Um, my friend Natalie, who voted me out, who yeah. was who the was winner. on Amazing Race, Yeah, too. she was on Amazing Race, right. and she won my season. She's the one person that I, I will still keep in contact with. Really? Even yeah. though she voted you out? Because oh, it was a blindside. You got bl- I, I know you remember this. Yes. But you got blindsided. Blindsided. <laughs> Completely. She, she pulled the move that I should have thought of right. on me. Uh, and I was like, so I respected her for it. I yeah. remember my like outro video. They were like, so how does it feel? Yeah. And I remember being like, uh, you know, I respect Natalie way yeah. to go. So she's still a friend of mine and, and I love her. I she, forgot the vote. Did you vote for her to win? Um, no, I voted for my mama. Oh, that's right. Yeah, because my mom was in the final been, three. That's right. I, I think I was the only that. one that voted for her, but you know. You blood. know, you have to. It's blood. Yeah. <laughs> yes, blood versus water. To. I chose blood. <laughs> Last question about uh, specifically about Survivor is what was your takeaway? Okay, so now you look at it and you're like, you know what? I wasn't necessarily following Jesus then. I am now. Is there anything you take away from that experience into who you are now? Absolutely. There's a few things. I think about this all the time because this question gets asked and I'm like, there's got to be more than than that. The answer that I usually give, the mm. first answer I usually give is just gratitude for the mm. small things. Your pillow, right, a right. chair, you know, toothpaste, a razor, the things <laughs> the things that you use on a daily basis that you don't thank God for. Right. You know what I mean? Now I thank God for them. I mean, I'll, I'll catch myself in my bathroom to this day brushing my teeth. I'm like, thank you, Jesus. Oh, feels so good. Feels so good. Yeah. You know, um, running water, all that kind yeah. of stuff. But another thing that I that I thought recently about that I took away from it is just people skills, mm-hmm. you know, just being able to appreciate different personalities and not um, get so annoyed with, <laughs> with different people. You right. know, the analogy I give to people when they say, what's it like being on Survivor? I say it's like being stuck on an elevator for 39 days, 40 days with 
people you would never want to hang out with. I get it. I totally get it. And and I think people can relate to this in your work, you know, in your work, in your home, whatever. But that's how God sanctifies us is the body of Christ doesn't look like the same. All, you know what I mean? Everybody's different. See, that's the thing I do like about Survivor and other shows like that, where you take and you take someone that's a believer and you put them in that mix. And I really do like that because they then are surrounded by people who are sometimes diametrically opposed to them in lifestyle right. or theology or credo or whatever, or, you know, right. all of these things. And and you have an opportunity at that point to really live out the gospel. I know yeah. there's the gameplay, but you have the opportunity to live out grace and kindness and learn from people totally. and, and, and really change the way that people view believers. Like I love anytime someone who is a believer shows up on one of these shows when they, when they do well, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> when, when they, when they crash and burn, when like they don't succumb me. to worldliness, yeah. it's great. Right. Yeah. See, that's, I, oh, <laughs> yeah. See, I'd love to be on, but I couldn't. I, I think about like, could I go back on now that I've walked with Jesus for at least four years now, I do believe that like he would carry me through mm-hmm. and I wouldn't compromise. Yeah. Um, I might be miserable, but I wouldn't compromise because like you just said, like getting to know people that either a have never heard the name Jesus. Right. That's an epic conversation. You know what I mean? To, to be able to share the gospel with someone who's never heard of the gospel. Right. That's amazing. And then to be able to talk to people who maybe grew up in church, got hurt by the church, right. whatever, like that's a whole other thing. So it was really cool for me to be out there with all walks of life, all colors, shapes, yeah. sizes, different backgrounds. I mean, it was A lifetime experience. And to look at it, you know, maybe through different eyes of like, now it's not about winning a million dollars. Like that would be a bonus, but it's more about living out uh, and being a good representation of my faith would give it way more meaning. Way more. Way more. So if Jeff Probst hears this, bring me back to (laughs) share the gospel, buddy. I'm going to be interviewing you and asking you questions, so okay. you got to keep your mind. Uh, I'm going to try to rattle you a little bit here. Good. Okay, so here we go. Let's go ahead and get you ready. I have uh, some of my grandmother's um, antique uh, terracotta plates, and so I hope you don't break it, but she loves these, and I borrowed them from her. Awesome. Um, so what you're going to do is you have a one-foot pole. You're going to balance the plate on top of this pole, and then I'm going to ask you questions. And if you last longer than me, I'm going to play your song. Great. If you do not, I'm going to shake your hand and uh, send you to exile. Okay. See ya. All right. So get it, get it lined up. It takes a minute to get it lined up. I'm going to give you that space to uh, make sure you get it balanced exactly where you want it. And then at the end, if you're still doing well, we're going to add nuts to it. Uh, these big nuts, like nuts and bolts. And uh, whoever is still standing at the end is going to be the winner. Here we Ready. go. Uh, does Jeff Pro smell good? Oh, so good. He seems like he would. Like, you guys are all out there sweating and smelling. Yeah. And he seems like he would smell good. He's not supposed to wear deodorant or cologne, but he does. Okay. It smells amazing. Um, so has being on Survivor opened up any other doors in the music business for you? Oh, for sure. Okay. Yeah. I mean, when I got back um, the first couple of months, I had a, I had a couple different agents and people, you know, reaching out. Sure. Because I was doing music at that time. You're not even, you're not even remotely, like your plate is still so solid. I did work out yesterday. Did you really? Okay, well I hope you did arms uh, and they're gonna get weak. Uh, So tell me about your song, Jesus Happened. Where did it come from for you? Well, three and a half years ago, I was sitting in a coffee shop and at that point in my life, I called myself a Christian, but um, I was so unhappy. I was so not full of peace and joy and zero righteousness. I just didn't even know what that meant. And a friend of mine walked up to me at this coffee shop, her name's Louisa, and she invited me to a worship night. She was like, Baylor, you gotta come to this worship night this Friday. You're gonna love it. So I showed up and I experienced what I now call, I didn't know what this was, the presence of the Lord. I experienced the tangible peace that surpasses all understanding. I immediately started weeping and fell to my knees and turned my life over to Christ. I feel like he's helping you right now. He is. Because you're telling the story and you're like, you're so solid <laughs> and not even remotely uh, moving. You've got well, this dialed in. He re, he re, uh, remade my foundation. <laughs> okay, well, who from Survivor would be shocked that you're doing Christian music now? Anybody? Because you weren't. Oh yeah. Because <laughs> you said like you weren't like very outspoken at the time. You weren't following Jesus at the time. Probably but Jeff now Probst. You um, probably, well... My mom was not shocked at all. She knew I should have been doing Christian music the whole time. Right. So when I started, when I called her up and told her, she like wept tears of joy. Um, I think Natalie. Oh, might, you you almost faltered. Yep. You got it back be though. Shocked. 
I can't talk right now. Oh, <laughs> oh, she's she's wobbling. She could lose this thing. Okay, we're coming. Your hands starting to go numb. A little. Um, but you know what? I was born to play Survivor. Um, coming up, uh, you are you know as an artist, you're gonna get to open for a lot of other uh, artists, like Christian artists and stuff like that. Who would be your first choice to share a stage with? If Kane ever needs an opener. Yes. You know what? I could see I'm that. Your girl. Yeah, they're really nice. And, and did you know that they did not name their ba- band after the first murder in the Bible? I did. Okay, good. It's, it's their, their actual last, last name. name, right? I did right. not. I, well, had I was to ask. thinking. I was like, why would they name a band? Yeah, exactly. I, know. I thought the same thing. Right. Uh, boy, you are crushing it. Okay, so here we go. You used a competitive cheer. Uh, name three cheer stunts. That's funny that we just brought up Kane because Logan from Kane was a cheerleader. No, he was not. Yeah, he was. And I was a cheerleader, like you just said. And the three stunts that I want to do with Logan. We've talked about it. Is a toss to hand, yep. which he throws me up in the air and catches me like this. That'd be amazing. One arm, a liberty, which is one foot lifted up, and a arabesque, which is your leg is behind you, this way. Amazing. One leg. No, I, I can tell you this. Like uh, the newsboys have the drum riser spin around, but nobody has done w- any of the cheering stunts. That could be a show. I would go see that. Well, we need to do it. I would definitely go see that. Okay. Well, all your questions have been answered. No you have way. done so well. Now, time to pick up a nut. Oh. One at a time. She thought she was done, and you have to lay three of them on your plate right now. One. Done. Two. You did all three. Hey. Three. You are crushing it. No. Oh, ah! No. No. It's starting to wobble. No. Ah! Dad, come it. Congratulations, <laughs> Baylor. Yay! You have bested me. And so, as <laughs> promised, we are going to play your song, crazy. Jesus Happened Woo! by Baylor Wilson here on The Wally Show. Hallelujah.